Hello, Yarny friends. It's Friday Fun Day, and I have another really fun project for you. This is a super fun project. It is a fuzzy bunny bag. Has a cute little fluffy tail, fuzzy bunny ears, beautiful ribbon, and it can be filled with lots of goodies. It doesn't have to be golden eggs. <laughs> It can be anything that you want, small toys, gift cards, or just fill it with stuffing and it makes a nice addition to your spring and Easter decorations. It's super cute. They measure about six and a half inches tall, not counting those ears, of course, and it's about 10 inches all the way around. So it's a really nice size. Maybe you want to give your mother a Mother's Day gift and you want to put some jewelry in there or just small toys for kids. It's lots of fun things that you can put inside. And, and then once you put those in there or if you stuff it with stuffing, you just add a beautiful ribbon and it makes a nice gift bag. So cute, so fun. Our little fuzzy bunny bags. <laughs> now I used again the Parfait yarn from Premier Pom Pom. This is that beautiful teal color. This is the yellow. And the white, this white here is not Pom Pom yarn. I just used another white that I had. But um, on today's demonstration, I am going to use the white for the bunny tail because every bunny needs a tail, right? <laughs> All righty. Now, if you want to go and check out the Premier Parfait yarn, I'll put their link down in the notes under the video so you can see all the beautiful colors. They also have some parfait yarn that doesn't have the pom-poms if you don't want the little dots. I love it. I think it looks like sprinkles on a cupcake. <laughs> I just love it. I, every color that I've used, I just love. And I love this yarn. It's a good sturdy, velvety, uh, chenille type yarn with that thread going through it. So it's a, it's a really great project. It's a really great yarn for this particular project, but we'll talk more about supplies in just a minute. Now, you can find the complete pattern written out with pictures on my blog, and as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what you're going to need is about an ounce of your main color and about half an ounce of your trim and ear color and then about a half ounce for to make your pom-pom for your bunny tail and I really want you to make a nice sized one I'm going to show you how to do that at the end of the video okay so I'm going to be using the yellow for the main part of my bunny I'm going to do the orange for the top part and then I'm going to use this parfait to make the bunny tail and again you can go to premier yarns i'll put their link my affiliate link underneath this video right up at the top there and um you can go and check out all their premier yarns they also have like neon colors in the parfait chunky and solid colors as well as the pom-pom all right it the truth is any bulky number six yarn will work for this project if you don't have any of the pom-pom and maybe you can't afford to go and get some fuzzy yarn, you can use any bulky number six yarn you have in your yarn stash. It can be variegated, striping, whatever you have, bulky number six will work. I just super duper love this parfait. And I have several projects that I did this spring and I ordered this parfait in from Premier specifically for these projects. All right, now you're going to need a ribbon. This is just your typical thin ribbon. This one, of course, is hot pink or bright pink. I'm going to use this beautiful teal. I think it's going to look great with these colors. And you need about 18 inches, which is probably more than you need. One thing to keep in mind, if you're making this for a small child, don't make the ribbon long enough where they can wrap it around their neck by accident, because we do not want to hurt any children 
with ribbons because kids for some reason they like to wrap things around their necks and so we don't want to do that and so if you're making this like I said for a small child make sure that ribbon is shorter that they can't get that around their neck okay alrighty we're gonna stitch with our J hook which is a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook and again it's a little smaller than we normally use for a bulky six but we want those stitches to be nice and close so our goodies don't slip out you need a needle for weaving in ends and then you need your scissors so not really very many things except don't forget if you want to put some polyfiber stuffing in there you can do that or whatever goodies you want to put inside your bag I do recommend if you're going to put sugary sweets in there like jelly beans and things you make sure they're pre-wrapped or you'll get the inside of your bag all sticky and nobody wants gooey melty jelly beans stuck inside their cute little Easter Bunny bags we're going to start at the bottom of our bag and work up to the side then we'll put the trim on make the ears add the trim and then of course add the pom-pom all right so I've got my yarn here. I'm going to make my slip knot. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to join this into a circle. There we go. Make that stay knot. And again, as I always say, if you have another method that you like making your circle better, then you can certainly use that, like the magic ring or circle whatever works best for you. All right, so we're gonna go in our circle, pull up a loop and chain three. Our chain three counts as one double crochet, and now we're going to double crochet nine more times, so we'll have a total of 10 double crochets for our first row. All right, so I lost count already. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you'll also notice I'm stitching over that tail of yarn, nine and 10. And I always count again just to make sure. Our chain three counts as our first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And before we go any farther, we're going to go to the inside, gently pull on that string to close up that hole because we do not want a hole in the bottom of our bunny bag that any goodies could fall out. All righty. Sometimes I like to put a bunch of quarters in my uh, gifts for my grandkids because they like to put them in those claw machines. You know, where you can put the money in and then you get a chance to try to win a stuffy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come up and go back the other way just to make sure that hole is not coming open. Give it a little bit of a tug. Where'd my scissors go? There they are. And we'll give that a clip. All right, so for row one, we have 10 double crochets. We join to our chain three and chain three. And then we took a couple seconds and closed up that hole. All right, let's do row two. On row two, we're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. There we go. And now we're just going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. So on row one, we had 10. Row two, we're going to have 20 double crochets. So two double crochets in each of the double crochets working all the way around. Then we'll join back to our chain three. We stitched one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then two double crochets in each of those stitches around. So we have 20 double crochet, because remember the chain three counts as our first. 
We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now for row three, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're not gonna stitch in the same stitch as our chain three. We're gonna go in the next stitch and stitch two double crochets. One and two. All right, then we're gonna go in the next stitch and stitch one double crochet. Then the next stitch we'll stitch two. And so what we're doing is what I like to call one and two. It's not a technical term for crochet. It just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. One double crochet in the next, two in the next. One double crochet in the next, and two double crochets in the next. And we'll repeat this working all the way around. One and two. I have completed row three. We stitched one and two, one double crochet in the next, two in the next, alternating all the way around. So we have 30 double crochets. I joined to my chain three and chained three. Now for row four, we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of those stitches around. We're not increasing any more. So one, double crochet in each of the double crochets working all the way around our bag. And because we're not increasing, row four is going to have 30 double crochets as well. So one double crochet in each of our double crochets around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row four, stitching one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. I joined to the chain three and chained three. And like I said, you're going to have 30 double crochets on row four. And now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row four for three more rows just one double crochet in each, stitching all the way around for three more rows. And this is building up the sides of our bunny bag. All right, so we're going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet around, which is repeating row four for three more rows. I have repeated R4 for three more rows. That brings us up to row seven. And again, we have 30 double crochets on those three additional rows. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clip our main color, which I'm using that yellow, and I'm gonna bring in my trim color. I'm using orange. And after R4, don't chain three because we're going to change to our new color, and if you would change, if you chained three, because it counts as your first stitch, you'd have one yellow double crochet on the next row, and we don't want that. All right, so we're gonna change to our new color and chain three. All right, that chain three counts as our first double crochet, and now we're just going to repeat what we did in stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. Oh, my yarn's jumping out of the basket. <laughs> All righty, so one double crochet in our next color here, in each of our double crochets around. I stitched one double crochet in each stitch around with my orange. I'm going to cut my yarn. I joined to my chain three, and now we're just going to tie this off. So I'm going to go in that next stitch and pull that loop to the inside and tie off. And I do have a little bit of weaving in to do here where we joined our new color. So I'm all tidied up. I've got my ends all weaved in. 
And now what we need to do is make the bunny ears. So we're gonna set this aside, and I'm going to make my bunny ears out of this orange so that it matches the top of my bunny bag. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our slip knot and we're going to chain 16 chains. And I do recommend you chain this just a little bit loose. It'll help us in finding where to put our stitches. All right, so I'm going to just a little bit loose chain 16 chains. So I have chained loosely my 16 chains and what we're going to do is we're going to place a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to stitch a double crochet in each of the chains across. one double crochet in each of those chains working all the way across. We started in the fourth chain from the hook. That chain three counts as one and then we double crocheted in each of our stitches across so we have 14 double crochets. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to stitch in what's called the opposite or other side of the chain. And in that first stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. All right, so now in each of those remaining chains, we're going to stitch one double crochet just like we did on the first side. One double crochet in each across. We stitched all the way across. Now we're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and we're going to cut our yarn. I'm going to go in that next set of loops and pull that loop to the back so we can tie that off. All right, so now I need to take a couple minutes, grab my needle and weave these ends in to the back, and then I'll show you how to add this onto your bunny bag. And even though this looks like one ear, it ends up as two. I weaved in my ends, so here's my ear that we're going to make into two ears. <laughs> Now you need to decide where the front of your bag is. Okay, because the way it works is we're going to put the bunny ears on the back portion of the inside of our bag, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of matching yarn and we're going to gather the center up. So what I do is I fold it in half and I take this string, making sure my ears are nice and even or as best that I can. And then we'll tie this, and this will gather up the center of those ears to make it into two bunny ears instead of one. All right, so now we have <laughs> two bunny ears. All right, so now we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna attach it to our bag. So I'm going to do one side uh, strand and then the other. All right, so here's the back of our bag, some fluff out of there. Okay, we wanna put it right here. All right, so, just so you can see it. We're gonna go around those bunny ears, but we wanna go make sure that we go through a stitch and not a hole, okay? We'll just go around and then we'll make a little loop and attach that one. All right, then we'll grab the other one. And we'll go around, making sure we go in a stitch 
And I like to go in the one right next to the one I just did. If I can get it in there. There we go. Go around and come up. All right, then we'll take these two ends and we'll tie those securely. Now, if you're worried that this knot is going to come undone, you can add a little fray check, a little dab of hot glue or E6000 or another type of glue that works on fabrics and make sure that knot's gonna come, not going to come undone. I have not had one come undone, but you never know. All right, and so now we have bunny ears. So the next thing we're going to do is make our bunny tail. All right, let's make a bunny tail. I've cut a piece of yarn that's about 12 to 14 inches long, and I've got the yarn that I'm going to use for the bunny tail. All right, and I'm gonna use this template. This one is a 14 inch, or uh, four inches, sorry, long template, okay? And so I'm just going to wrap it around there a bunch of times. Because I want a really fluffy, a really, really fluffy bunny tail. All right. And it's kind of up to you how many times you want to wrap it. All right, so I pulled out the big scissors. There we go. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this a little bit different. Normally I just put it through here, but I'm gonna take this off because I'm gonna do it a different way. There we go. So I'm gonna wrap it this way. All righty, now tie it nice and secure. The key to your pom-pom staying together is to really give it a nice tight tie. And if you don't feel like this yarn's going to keep it secure, you can always add a piece of white yarn that matches so that it does stay a little more secure. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is cut the loops. And I've got this bucket because doing pom-poms is messy anyway, and this fuzzy yarn can be quite messy. But you know what? It's totally worth the mess. <laughs> all righty, let's get all those loops. All right, then I give it a little bit of a shake. Now make sure you don't cut these two that are holding your pom-pom. And I'm going to push that forward. And this is a nice fluffy pom-pom because we want our bunny tails to be fluffy, right? So I'm going to squeeze it really hard and just start clipping. And it's kind of up to you how big you want your pom-pom to be. But it's super fun when our bunnies have a nice fluffy tail. All right, so there's my initial cut. Try to keep the mess contained. That's a really big tail. So I think I'm going to cut it down just a little bit more. So I'm going to squeeze it up there. Be careful not to cut your hand. <laughs> These scissors are not as sharp as I would like them to be. So it's real important to have a good sharp pair of scissors. I should have pulled my sewing scissors out, but I get mad at myself when I pull them out because I forget to put them back and then I'm looking for my sewing scissors when I need them. All right, that looks good. All right. Oh, missed a string. Well, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's shake it again. Oh, I love that. All right, so what I do is I kind of hold it up this way and look at it. Make sure I don't cut those long strings, and I sort of flatten it out to see if I like how it looks. Sometimes you get some that are, like, sticking out on the edges, and you want to fix those. All right, oh, right there. It's For some reason, it's not liking those nylon strings in there. My scissors, that is. All right, now, yes, this is a little bit messy, but like I said, it is totally worth the mess for this to be such a beautiful pom-pom. All right, now, the placement of the pom-pom, I tried not to put it exactly in the back. It's over to the side a little bit. That way it can be seen 
when you set it up, okay? So, here's my front. I'm gonna take it and put it a little bit on the side here. Oh, I just love that. All right, so I'm gonna use my crochet hook. And again, when you add this, make sure you go through a stitch, not a hole. If you go through a hole, it'll still hold, but it always holds better if you can pull your strings through a stitch. All right, so I'm gonna go down here next to it, go through a stitch again. And then we're just gonna tie this on the inside here. And again, if you're worried about this holding, you can always add a little fray check, a little dab of hot glue, E6000, or another type of fabric glue. All righty, so now our bunny, <laughs> I just love that. That is so cute, I love it. <laughs> so our bunny bag has ears, it has a pom-pom, and now we need to add the ribbon tie. Okay, and I like to put the ribbon tie over to the side. That way it can be seen when we see the pom-pom, and it just, <clears throat> it's just the way I like to do it. <clears throat> if you like to do it another way, that is totally okay. All right, so what I do is I take my crochet hook and I decide, okay, I'm gonna come through these two and then I put my crochet hook backwards going in and out every other one. There we go. And then I'll grab that ribbon. You can also make a chain instead of using ribbon if you want to. I just like using the ribbon. I think it's sort of, uh, you know, so fun just to have that extra prettiness. All right, so I'll do it again around the back. All right, we're almost there. All right, I want to come, there we go. Oops, get all there. <laughs> all righty, so, <clears throat> so here's our ribbon. Now it's up to you again what you want to fill your bunny with. All right, so I've got these candies here. I'm just going to go ahead and pour those in there. And it's kind of nice to put candies in these because they're just fun for Easter. Wouldn't it be fun to have an Easter egg hunt and have some of these out there for the kids to find? All right, I'm just going to make a bow. And remember, we don't want your ribbon to be so long that kids might get that around their neck. So keep that in mind when adding a ribbon. There we go. <clears throat> so there's our yellow bunny. Here's our blue one. Let's tie it back up. And of course, like I said, you don't have to have this particular yarn, although I love it, I think you should get some. <laughs> it's so pretty with all these little speckles on it. And there they are. Push this one out. That one looks bigger because it's got stuff inside. There we go. <laughs> They're just so cute. They make me laugh with the big fluffy tails and it's just so cute. Ha, 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 ha.